Hi, this is Joe Hildreth, and welcome to an episode of Exploring Joomla 2.5 for Extension Development. In this episode, we're going to show you how to set up uh, a LAMP server on Ubuntu 12.4. Uh, the reason why we've chose uh, 12.4 is because it's a long-term support, uh, and um, you don't have to worry about you know it falling out of support and not being able to get updates and that sort of stuff. The next one to be released here in a few months uh, will be uh, 14.04. So. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to set up a LAMP server, a uh, local LAMP server, and what we want to be able to do is uh, set this up so that we can uh, have a place to install a local copy of Joomla and uh, write our files and, and that sort of stuff so we don't have to you know, go to a live web server and that sort of thing. It's just you know, a typical thing that you do to set up. In addition to setting up LAMP, which stands for Linux Apache MySQL PHP, we're also going to install a program called PHP MyAdmin, which allows you to um, administer the MySQL database server to add tables and that sort of thing. We're not going to go a lot into that. We just want to get it all set up. And finally, we're going to uh, set up Apache to read uh, virtual host directories. And we're going to do this for a couple of reasons. One, it's uh, convenient to have the web server look at a directory in your home folder or somewhere in your home folder, like maybe your desktop, than it is to uh, have to you know go out to ver and www to uh, to edit the files. Uh, and the other reason why we're setting up virtual hosts is because sometimes uh, you might be working on uh, two, three, four, five different websites and you'd like to have a local copy of those. This way you can have each one running under its own uh, pseudo name, uh, its virtual host, and you can get to it and they're all kind of autonomous and only have to run one web server. So let's get started. Uh, we're gonna open up the terminal. Now I'm running the Unity interface. Now this will work on Kubuntu, Lubuntu, all of them. So probably the easiest way to get the terminal is just to press Control alt and T and it brings up the terminal. And to install LAMP is incredibly easy. We're going to do sudo apt get install LAMP dash server tilde. I mean I'm sorry, caret. Now this carrot's important, you gotta have it. Basically what this does, if you were to install Ubuntu server, there's a little program that runs that's called task select. And task select, you know, allows you to set up your server for like email or a LAMP server or SSH or this or that. Well this basically allows us to perform the same function that the task select program would do without us having to actually install task select. So we're gonna press enter and we're going to enter in our password. Okay, and then it's going to say, hey, we have to download this amount of uh, stuff. We're going to tell it yes. Hopefully this won't take too long. Okay, now when it's downloaded, uh, it's going to ask you for a root, uh, for, for a password for the MySQL or MySQL database server's root user. This is like the super user. This password is very, very important, so um, don't lose it. If, you, if you're one of those kind of folks who write passwords down, write this down and put it in your wallet. Put it somewhere safe so that you know you're not going to lose it. So enter the password that you want here. Okay, and you can hit tab to highlight OK and press enter. It's going to ask you to repeat that password, so enter that password in again. Hit tab and then enter for OK. So, as it installs the uh, components here, or the, the software here, um, that was basically it to install LAMP. I mean, now we have some configuration and stuff to do, but um, it's, uh, it's really just that simple. And hopefully this doesn't take too long. If it takes too long, I'll edit, I'll edit this stuff out of the video to kind of keep it a little shorter, or maybe just make you painfully wait with me. Haven't really decided. Okay, now that the uh, LAMP server is done and so on, we're back to our prompt there. Uh, let's test to make sure everything went well. So we'll open up our browser and then let's go to HTTP colon slash slash localhost. And we should get a message that says 
it works. This is the default web page for the server. The web server software is running. No content's been added yet. So hey, man, that was easy. Okay, so let's get on to uh, configuring some stuff. And uh, but before we do that, let's install a program called PHP My Admin that will allow us to um, use. Uh, the, uh, the MySQL server to add tables, databases, and that sort of stuff. And this is again another command line um, uh, install here. It's sudo apt get install and it's php my admin and then enter. It's going to say, hey, you're going to need to download some stuff. We're going to say yes and hit enter. Okay, when it downloads and we start the configuration, um, <clears throat> PHP My Admin can uh, automatically configure itself to use a couple different web servers. Well, we're going to select Apache 2. We're going to hit spacebar to select that, and then we're going to hit tab to OK and press enter. Okay, at this point, it's uh, PHP the install program. PHP My Admin lets us know that it needs a, a database. Uh, to work and it says uh, you, you wants to know if we want to configure the database for PHP, uh, PHP my admin using the DB config common and this is perfectly fine so we're going to hit enter here and it's going to ask it's asked for the uh, password of the database administrative user remember when we installed lamp mysql asked for a password for the root user that password is what we want to use here so enter enter that password hit tab for OK and enter Okay, now it's um, wanting credentials to set up PHP My Admin uh, to access the database that it, it created. You could leave this blank and it will generate a random one. I typically uh, just put the same password that I set in for the root account. Um, now on a production server, I probably wouldn't want to do this, but again, this is a development server. This machine will never see um, the internet side of the uh, of the of the interface coming in. So I'm going to use the same password. You can use what you like here. Hit tab OK. And we have to re-enter the password. Oops. And OK. And it continues with its install. Okay, now that we're at the prompt, let's check our work. So we're going to go back to our web browser and we're going to go to localhost slash PHP my admin hit enter ha ah, and we get a login screen nah, I'm not sure what that stuff is but we're gonna log in using root remember is our is our master account or the super user account for the MySQL um, database server and we're gonna set the password that we created when we installed it and if we can log in like that we're in great shape so Again, this allows us to do things like create databases, add tables to databases, run SQL queries on databases, and to uh, develop in Joomla for any amount of time, you're going to have to ask, ha have some sort of access to the database. So this provides that for us. So let's uh, move on to the next part. Okay. Now, Apache uh, normally runs as a user called www-data and runs as a group called www-data. Sorry, I don't, I'm not speaking very clear today. And you, as a user, run as uh, your username. If you look here, you see I run as Joe H, and then my base group, my home group, is Joe H. And if we tell Apache um, that we're going to say, hey, I want you to use this folder that I've created on my desktop. Well, Apache saves files that's marked as owner for it and then you go in and try to edit and you can't and it generally creates a lot of permission problems okay so one solution or at least the solution that I've opted to take is to tell the system that when Apache runs it will run as me okay now that's really bad security practice and I wouldn't advise it if you're setting up a machine that you're gonna have you know a, a a port 80 pass through your firewall and it's going to be accessed to the outside world it's just that's bad practice so but I'm under the assumption here that 
we're developing on a local machine to get to develop our extension or you know our component or t template or whatever and then when we're done we're going to send that zip that component up and send it out to a site and install it on a live server so I'm not really worried about it so but you have been warned okay so um, to do this we have to edit a file called environment variables or invars okay we're going to do that and we have to do that as super user so we're going to sudo nano it's uh, etsy apache2 oops try this again I can't type today either apparently uh, env vars this is the file we want to edit and what we're looking for in particular is if we arrow down here where we say hey we want Apache to run as user you see it's www-data by default I'm gonna change this to my username which is Joe H and in the run group as the same Joe H okay uh, that's basically all you have to do for that. So I'm going to hit Control X. Yes, I want to save the buffer, and that's the file I want to save it to. Now let's back up here just a minute. If you're really kind of new to Linux, uh, this whole uh, user uh, name or user and user group and stuff might be a little bit foreign to you. Well, if you're in the if you're in the the console or the terminal, you can always see your user is over here to the left of this at sign and then whatever's to the right of that at sign and when you have a default prompt set up is, is the name of your machine but if you're ever curious as to what your username is you can type a command called who am I and hit enter and you see it lets me know that hey you are Joe H okay so that's how you can find your user and if you're not if, if you're not sure what group you're in I guess maybe some uh, Linux distributions could set up uh, a different group. Uh, Ubuntu typically puts you in a group, uh, one, one of many groups actually, but one that is the same as your name. But if you want to know uh, what group you're in, you can type the word groups, right? Oops. And then the user that you want to know what groups they're in. Well, I'm going to put my own name. And when I hit enter, you see that I'm actually. Joe H is a member of all of these groups okay so but you notice the first one says Joe H it's the same as my username so that's why when I set, when I edited the config file I just used Joe H for the user and I used Joe H for the group okay now that we've told Apache that or the server that we want it to run as ourselves in our group we have to make one one other change there's a lock file or lock uh, folder that Apache has to have access to in order to, to run and if we don't give uh, ourselves ownership of that folder Apache won't be able to start so we're gonna sudo change ownership okay and then the user your username in my case is Joe H and then the file that we want to change is ver lock Apache 2 Okay, and if we actually look at that, uh, let's just go take a look. Ver lock, and let's do ls minus l. We can see that the Apache 2 folder here now does indeed belong to us. Now, the last thing we need to do for this to take effect is that we have to tell, uh, we have to restart Apache, otherwise, it uh, won't work. So we're sudo service Apache 2 restart okay and you see that uh, we restarted but you know Apache's griping about this fully qualified domain name well what's this mean well it just means that we haven't set one it's not a real error it's just a kind of a nagging warning it will show up uh, in your cron jobs and things like that so let's uh, let's just go ahead and fix that it's very very easy to fix we just need to set the server name in the HTTPD dot comp file. So let's sudo nano the files etsy apache2 http dot conf 
okay and see it's empty by default so we're going to add the directive server name space and then whatever you want to call it now here's one thing I do want to caution you against do not name your server the same thing that you would name one of your virtual hosts keep this completely independent you can call it anything you like okay it doesn't really matter you can call it Frodo Gollum you can call it Bilbo you can call it whatever right? if you're not a JR token fan I guess you can call it something else uh, I'm just gonna call mine development okay this just lets me know it reminds me that my server is for development okay and then once you've uh, set that we're gonna hit control X yes I want to save those changes and I'm gonna press enter because that's the file I want to save it to alright so uh, this is a uh, coming along pretty good. The next thing that we need to do is set up the folder for the virtual host because each virtual host has uh, you know you want to put uh, its uh, documents in its own folder to keep them separate. Now since we told Apache to run as ourselves and run as our group and we've set uh, uh, some permissions that uh, for the lock folder to us and we've set the server name well let's go ahead and create that folder I'm going to create mine on the desktop. Now, you know, I could come over here and, and uh, just right-click my desktop and say, hey, create new folder, you know, and and name it here, okay? Um, or we can do it from the command line. Yes, I do want to delete that. And we're going to, I'm just going to do it from the uh, command line. I'm going to say, hey, make directory, tilde, which is a shortcut for saying my home. Okay, and I'm going to go to the desktop and I'm going to call mine Joom Dev, okay, because this is my Joomla development um, site, and this is where I want the uh, things to go. I'm going to press Enter, and poof, there it is on the desktop, right there. So we're in good shape. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to set up the virtual host for Apache, okay, and we do this by writing a creating a file in the folder in Etsy Apache 2 sites dash available. So I'm going to sudo nano and we're going Etsy Apache 2 sites dash available slash and then the name of the now this name could be anything you want to call it. I'm just going to call mine my Joom dev. Okay, that's uh, you want to name it something so that when you go to edit it later or you're looking at it later, you kind of know what that virtual host is. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay, and then we have a blank file here. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit uh, to save some time. I'm just going to paste this in here and we'll go over this a little bit. So we're saying uh, we're creating a virtual host that's going to answer on any IP address on port 80. The server name for that is called myjoom.dev. The server alias is same, myjoom.dev. The document root, now this is important. We have home username desktop. Well, I need to change username to my actual username. So Joe H, okay, desktop joom dev, and that refers to this folder right here. Okay. The log level, we're saying, hey, I want you to uh, write any error logs or custom logs in the normal Apache log directory and I want you to call the log file myjoom.dev error and myjoom.dev access log. Okay? And then in order for virtual host to work we have to have the rewrite engine on. Okay? And then we're going to put the rewrite log here and then this is the level of error reporting which zero is fairly high. So an all between the virtual host tags. That's all you got to have for that. It's fairly simple. You can pause the video and type this in, or if you download the document from the website, you can do a, a copy and paste. And to paste into Nano, it's Control Shift V. So just like pasting into the uh, terminal. So I'm going to hit Control X. Yes, I want to save these changes, and I'm going to press Enter. Okay. So now that we have the virtual host for Apache set up, we have to uh, do a couple things here. We have to enable the module rewrite for Apache, and that allows us uh, it allows Apache to actually find our virtual host when it sees the name come across. So we're going to sudo, 
and we're going to say Apache 2 A2 enable module rewrite. Okay, and it says, hey, for this take effect, you got to restart uh, Apache. We got a couple other things. We want to enable our uh, virtual site, our virtual host. So we're going to sudo Apache 2 enable site and then the name of the site and that was the file that we created up above right here my joom dev so that's what we want there my joom dev okay enter and again it says hey you gotta restart it so that's all the changes that we have to make there so let's go ahead and restart it sudo service restart oops let's try this again apache to restart and Apache restarts and you notice now it's restarted and we don't have the it's not griping about the the fully qualified domain name so we're doing pretty good okay now the next thing we need to do is we have to uh, set up uh, name services for a virtual host now if we were on the internet we could do this by uh, you know, entering uh, an A record into the DNS server, but because we're not on the internet, uh, we have to do something a little different. If we go to localhost, we end up with the Apache's default um, web um, directory or, or document directory, saying that I can't find what you're looking for. This is so. This is where I'm going to go. So, for example, if I said, "Hey, go to Joom." Um, dot dev or whatever it wouldn't know how to find it it just it can't find it so what we want to do is enable Apache to be able to find that and we're going to do that by editing the host file which is uh, is where the computer goes to to convert a name into an IP address so we're going to sudo nano etsy hosts okay and then you see that I have a few up here uh, myself I'm just going to enter a line and here what we do is we give the IP address of the server that we're wanting to translate to so this is still local host so we're at 127.0.0.1 and this is the name that you want to use so I'm going to use uh, myjoom.dev so whenever I point to myjoom.dev um, this is where we're going to go to and remember I set this server name in the virtual host file to myjoom.dev okay so this is they have to match here so we're gonna tell it to save this yes and close so we're pretty good there okay so let's um, uh, let's create a, a simple web page for a virtual host so uh, tell you what let's just cheat up here let's go into this folder here and let's create a new document and I'm gonna call mine index.html because this is just a test and let's open this maybe with nah, gedit okay and let's write a very simple web page here I'm just gonna write HTML because it's an HTML file and I always try to close my tags as I open them because otherwise I forget and we have the head of the document here and our document has a title and I'm going to call the title my Joomla development server test page okay and that's the end of the title Alright, and then we have the body. When you get in here. And see what we'll put in the body. We'll put uh, an H3 tag. And it says virtual host test page. And you can put anything you want here. Okay, and we'll put a paragraph. And we'll say welcome to your virtual host and in the paragraph and we will save this and exit 
So let's uh, let's go test it. We'll go to our browser and let's go to myjoom.dev. And if we've done everything right, it should say, "Hey, here's our title up there: My Joomla Development Server Test Page." And it says, "Virtual Host Test Page. Welcome to your virtual host." So now you have everything set up to start. Um, developing for Joomla. In other videos we will uh, sh I'll show you installing Joomla, I'll show you some backups and we'll show you some other things. But again want to try to keep these uh, relatively short and to the point. Uh, if you have any questions uh, hit contact at the top of the web page or post on uh, YouTube uh, if you have questions and I'll try to keep up with that. I have a lot going on but I hope that you found this uh, little tutorial instructive and and, and helpful. So thanks for taking the time to watch and uh, we'll see you in other videos. Thanks again. Bye-bye.